Welcome back. Jenna Speglia will be sharing with us next. She's from San Diego State, and we look forward to hearing your talk. Hey, hi, everyone. Uh, well, it's, it's really a pleasure to uh, be back to Biotap. This is actually my second Biotap conference. I was in the COVID Biotap uh, cohort. And, you know, this project is my Biotap project. It really started out of utter necessity. I found myself uh, working really hard to try to help undergraduate biology students taking their kind of first gateway introductory course in biology, trying to help these students learn. And it was very clear that uh, undergraduate teaching assistants, graduate teaching assistants too, but the undergraduates were so much more plentiful that these students were key to the success of, uh, of, of our um, undergrads. And so we then started uh, with great colleagues, uh, Dr. Ross Name being the one leading this effort at the time, uh, trying to prepare these undergraduate teaching assistants. And then realized we didn't know if we were doing a very good job unless we assessed it. And so this work is an attempt to assess these undergraduate, undergraduate teaching professional development courses that I am uh, working on right now and that others, of course, are too. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about the development and validation of what I call the C instrument, seeing educational equity, uh, so that we can measure something called equitable noticing in our STEM, but very specifically biology teaching assistants. And so I'm going to start here that classrooms are unpredictable spaces, lots of things are happening at the same time. And teacher noticing, this construct of teacher noticing that's very well established and is pretty old in the field of teacher education, involves an ability to pay attention to, reason about, and respond to important events in real time, and also to ignore those unimportant events. And what teachers do and do not notice in this educational space that they find themselves is often related to what they know, but it's also distinct from knowing. Noticing these important events is distinct from knowing about what these events, uh, what, what events are important. And so what is noticed therefore uh, is often situated within the instructor's experiences. And so noticing really does often require learning for instructors. And so much of this work has really been done around the noticing of learning. However, uh, it's clear that instructors' ability to notice inequitable events in, in a classroom is a critical component uh, in an effort to mitigate these events in college classrooms. And so more recently, this construct of teacher noticing for learning was explicitly expanded to include the noticing of equity in classrooms. And actually, some authors have begun to build instruments to measure it. Now, most of this work is done within the field of, math of mathematics education. So equitable noticing unfortunately remains underexplored in biology education. And this is especially true within the context of high enrollment undergraduate uh, introductory biology courses, which are arguably some of the most inequitable spaces that our students in college will find themselves in. So the objectives of this study were to conceptualize the construct of equi equitable noticing specifically for high enrollment biology courses using existing teacher noticing and existing equity frameworks and to develop a framework and associated instrument to facilitate the measurement of the ability to notice or see events that maintain, mitigate, or exacerbate inequity in these high enrollment courses. And so to kind of walk you through how we're situating this C instrument um, uh, into the theory that's been, uh, been worked on for decades, um, I have this uh, kind of image here. And so, uh, Sheeran is one of the uh, earliest uh, researchers working on this construct of professional vision or professional noticing. Um, and then later on, the construct was further developed to identify the specific domains of noticing and how these domains of noticing are distinct from domains of knowing about something. Uh, in 2011, 2012, the kind of noticing uh, construct was expanded to the noticing of equity. And then the first instrument, at least that I've been able to find that measures the ability of instructors to notice uh, equity was in, in 2019. And this is all in the teacher education literature and in the mathematics education literature. Meanwhile, within Deber, there has been a lot of work around equity, equitable classroom practices. And of course, this is a paper that's come up several times in our meeting, um, uh, Tanner's seminal work around uh, structure and equity. 
uh, and then active learning being linked to equity, as well as Couch's scientific teaching framework, all link specific actions within classrooms to equity. And then in 2023, I don't think this is officially published yet, but the NRC at least uh, gave this document out for public comment on equitable and effective teaching in undergraduate STEM education. And so using all of this theory, our aim again is to develop a framework and associated instrument to facilitate the measurement of the ability to notice or see these inequitable events in our classrooms. So these are the methods that were used in this study. Well, first we defined equity as the idea that the distribution of certain goods and services is purposefully unequal so that the neediest of students may receive more of certain resources often to compensate or make up for their different starting points. And this is the National Research Council's definition. The integrated framework that uh, we developed as part of this study uh, was then used to develop a two-part instrument measuring first the knowledge about educational equity and then the noticing about educational equity since these are well understood to be two distinct things. Interviews with two experts in educational equity were used to gather content validity evidence and inform revisions of the framework and the instrument items. And then think aloud interviews with 20 undergraduate TAs were used to gather substantive validity evidence and inform revisions of the items. And finally, Roche analysis was used to investigate some of the instrument's psychometric properties. And I'm not gonna go into detail on kind of any of this psychometric stuff, but I'll show you a little bit of results that I think are useful. The instrument was um, administered to a group of undergraduate teaching assistants uh, that were taking a, a, a preparation course alongside their undergraduate teaching assistant uh, uh, work that they did in an actual classroom. And these students were all working in uh, high enrollment introductory biology courses that were over 250 students. And 89 of our undergraduate uh, TAs completed the survey with a 94% participation rate. The majority of our undergraduate TAs actually identified as a member of the, at least one historically excluded community. So at the time of administration, our undergraduate TAs had received preparation in topics like effective feedback, cognition, learning theories, and pedagogical content knowledge, but not yet on equity and diversity. This survey took place before that unit of their preparation course. Here's some results. The first thing we have found is that knowing about and noticing equity are multifaceted constructs. And so the integrated C framework that we developed includes 49 classroom events related to equity organized within six broad categories and 18 subcategories. So there's a lot going on here, which is probably surprising no one on this call. And these are the six broad framework categories that we have emphasized that again, come from the deeper literature. Um, so we have science practices, course alignment, classroom organization and structure, student participation, student feedback, and cultural engagement. And I have definitions here on the left side that I won't go into right now, but of course, we'd be happy to talk about that. And so let's talk a little bit more about what these uh, framework categories were then used to do. Um, so items were developed using these framework categories uh, in order to start building what we call the C instrument. And again, there's two constructs that we work to develop items that align uh, with. And the first construct is knowing about equity in the classroom. So this is the, the knowledge item. What do you know about equity and how do we measure that? And we developed 56 multiple choice items about uh, each one about a single subcategory of equity within our framework. And we also developed items about a second construct, the noticing of equity in the classroom. And we developed 19 scenario-based items that actually integrate multiple of our framework categories. And the integration of multiple categories in these items reflects the understanding that classrooms are multidimensional and lots of things are occurring simultaneously. So we wanted these scenarios to be um, somewhat realistic. And we have uh, uh, about 19 uh, noticing items that were developed. I'm going to give you an example of some of the items here. And so taking the framework category of classroom organization and structure, one of the subcategories within this framework category is that instructors build an inclusive, accessible, and fair classroom community for all students. An example event that is aligned with that subcategory is that instructors provide course materials and support that are readily available to all students regardless of time or financial constraints. 
And these then categories and subcategories and events can be operationalized into specific items that can appear on an instrument. And so the, the item about knowing that came from these, this particular event is shown here. The instructor tells students to visit the in-person office hours if they want information on how assignments and exams will be graded. Is this action helpful, harmful, or unrelated to promoting equity in the classroom? We also, using the same framework category and same uh, subcategory, developed a noticing item. And this is uh, the noticing item here. An instructor typically posts lecture slides online after each class. However, this semester, the instructor noticed that class attendance is low. To encourage students to come to class and engage in the lecture, they decide to wait to post slides until a few days before the exam. This way, the instructor can ensure they're engaging with the material throughout the semester and can ask questions in a timely manner. Is this change helpful, harmful, or unrelated to promoting equity in the classroom? And there are, of course, other examples uh, uh, with the framework categories of cultural engagement as well that I can talk more about um, at the end, if you'd like. So again, knowing about and noticing equity, these are multifaceted constructs. And I've just given you the, uh, an example in the classroom organization and structure framework category. And so, but let's dig a little bit more into this idea of multifaceted or really how does this instrument kind of function psychometrically? And so on the top, we have the two constructs, knowing about equity in the classroom on the left and noticing equity in the classroom on the right. And I'm gonna show you now their Roche reliability, item fits and dimensionality. And these are kind of indications of how well these constructs robustly measure what we think they're measuring. And so um, the, uh, first I'm actually gonna show you item fit. And overall, most of the items fit within the expectations of the Roche model. So that's good news. And the ones that don't fit, we can work on. And then as far as reliability, we see that the reliabilities are actually quite good for knowing about equity in the classroom, but not so great for noticing equity in the classroom. And low reliability can lead to uh, low robustness and precision of our measures. Sample size could be one reason why we're seeing low reliability in, in the noticing items, but this is something that needs more investigation. And then dimensionality is is how multidimensional are these two constructs? And using the uh, method we used here, which I'm not gonna go into detail about, we see that they are likely multidimensional, both the knowing about equity in the classroom and the noticing about equity in the classroom. They're not just one thing. Um, looking at uh, this scatter plot here, where we can look at the kind of patterns in the data, we can see that for knowing about equity in the classroom, for each of these, these uh, uh, framework categories, it's kind of a mishmash. We don't see the cultural engagement category in gray uh, clustered in one space. We don't see the feedback category, which is in blue, clustered in another space. They're kind of all mixed around. And so there's work to be done to figure out if they're multidimensional, but how? Another result we found is that some categories of equity were harder to know about. As you can see here, cultural engagement had a lower average knowledge score than knowing about these other framework categories. And finally, knowing about and noticing equity were correlated, but knowing about it was harder. So overall, uh, there was 49% uh, average scores for knowledge, but 60% average scores for noticing. And there was a moderate positive relationship between knowing and noticing with a, a, an R of 0.58. So this study took place with undergraduate TAs at two diverse institutions, and the patterns here uh, may be different for graduate TAs and for faculty populations, which is an important point. Uh, the equity categories that are harder to know about, in this case, cultural engagement, suggest important areas of focus for TA professional development. The idea that knowing and noticing equity are multidimensional constructs, this has been qualitatively supported by other authors before, so it's not surprising. And this study quantitatively supports that finding. Uh, it's also interesting to note that the categories of equity, which again, those six categories, they, were, they have been advanced by the Deaver community and they're useful categories, but they may not align with a unidimensional structure, suggesting that there may be other dimensions that these items can and perhaps should be matched to. And one example is uh, Gutierrez's 2012 framework for equity in mathematics education. And it delineates two axes of equity, the access and achievement axis, and then identity and power axis. So overall, the C framework and instrument is a step forward in conceptualizing and measuring the construct of equitable noticing in some of the most problematic edu 
educational spaces for biology undergraduates. And future work will continue to iteratively improve the framework and the instrument to generate robust measures of these constructs, which can be leveraged to assess the efficacy of RTA preparation programs. Thank you, everyone. And I would happily take your questions. Jenna, when did you administer this assessment to these? So it's been administered uh, for the past four years, but in but it's been improved iteratively probably every year, year and a half. And so this round of uh, of measures came from this current semester and springs this past spring semester. So they're very they're very current. And one of our challenges is getting a large enough sample size to make really robust claims. And then, then of course we modify and improve the instrument and we kind of have to start over building a new sample size. Mm -hmm. I have a question related to one of the items that kind of um, hit home for me was about the slides for example. So I'm kind of curious because um, I usually, so full disclosure, my undergraduates had said something to me about a disadvantage for instructors that do post their slides well ahead of time. So typically speaking, I'll, I'll post my slides ahead of time, you know, people that need to go through them and prepare, take notes, awesome. They're coming in prepared, hopefully. So that's great. But I did notice my attendance was kind of tanking. And so I just one day to a totally different class, um, it was a professional development class and um, I said something about it. I was kind of like, I just can't figure out why my attendance isn't as high. And one of the students said, Dr. G, do you post your slides ahead of time? And I said, yeah. And they were like, stop doing that. Like release them right before. And they admitted to me that they, you know, count on the slides. They're like, this is what she's going to cover. I'm good. So, you know, it's interesting because when there's the, knowing versus noticing. And I, I don't really have an articulate question in here, but I'm just kind of curious on your thoughts when it's, you know, we sort of think about where our intent is mm -hmm. to do something that is equitable, but the action that results from that, and even mm -hmm. if we may be achieving that goal of being equitable, might not be most conducive to learning, so to speak. So so yeah. how, what do you think about that? Well, let me first say that like learning, and this is consistent with the deeper literature, learning is a core equity variable. So learning has to be happening, absolutely. And actually the item, there's no evidence that I'm aware of that posting slides in advance helps students learn. And so the item that actually, I think we're talking about here, uh, which I read quickly, um, was referring to slides being posted right before the exam, as opposed to perhaps right before the, the, the class or right after the class. So really the proximity to the exam was very close. Um, so that was that specific kind of component there that students might, you know, for month, you know, weeks not have the, the, the slides uh, until, you know, two days before the exam. Um, but as far as I'm aware, there's no, um, there's no evidence that you have to post slides in advance to, increase learning, increase equity or anything like that. And so the item really doesn't uh, assume that there is an equitable component around posting them before the class specifically. But it's interesting to, the reason we kind of use the timing of slide posting here is that it really kind of triggers assumptions by in, in student TAs because they have a lot of opinions about it. And so you may actually have a false sense of knowing what's equitable and you may have a, a, a you know, deficit noticing of what's equitable there uh, as well. Yeah. Jenna, there's a, a question. question with Beth. Yeah. So Beth asked, what does it mean that knowing is lower than noticing? I thought knowing was half the battle, but seriously, how can they be better at noticing if I'm understanding that? Yes, this was actually um, a surprising, but maybe not that surprising result. So we did indeed find that the students Again, the knowing and noticing items were developed from the same framework. And so comparing the scores across the two items, you, one could criticize that approach, but there's also some reasons why that might be an appropriate approach. Um, and we did indeed find that they, then they, that they uh, noticed more 
Wait, hold on. That they noticed more than they knew, that they noticed more than they knew. And how could that be? Well, actually the noticing literature is very clear that knowing might be a prerequisite to noticing, but it is not, uh, it is not, it, it does not, does not always predict it necessarily. So you might think that these are more related to each other, but students may not have names for things, but they have experiences with things. And so noticing is very much related to students' experiences. And again, these students, almost all of them identify with having at least one um, historically marginalized uh, group membership. And so these students have experienced things. Uh, they're undergraduates. They're not graduate students. They're not faculty. And so my interpretation is that they are noticing based on their personal experience, which is central to the noticing literature, but they know less because they haven't had formal instruction in pedagogy or even equitable pedagogy. Um, and that's, I think, what we're seeing here, but I don't think we'll see that same pattern with graduate students, perhaps, and certainly not with faculty. So surprising, but perhaps not given the population. Okay. There's anything in the chat I missed. More equity stuff for you there, right? When you're thinking about, like I think about saying yes to writing students letters and being references for them and things like that. So it's just, you know, in thinking about um, opportunities for them to engage and, you know, participate in class, things like that. Um, Dan, I love the question. I mean, I, I've thought about this a lot when it's like, what is the advantage to coming to class, right? Why come to class when you have videos and all of these publisher, you know, resources and things like that. So, um, so, I mean, I think as educators and, you know, even in training our TAs, it's thinking about creating the value of, of being a part of that community. Yeah, but the and last thing is interesting. I'd be curious to know if if you know any of your items or anything like that um, comes into play there. Uh, so I think I missed the very first part of what you just said, and the item of, of what comes into play with any of the items. I'm sorry, say again. I think I missed your. Specific... Oh, the first part. Yeah. I don't remember. I haven't eaten lunch yet. So, I mean, I could have said anything. Like, <laughs> in fact, I'm shocked that I'm even engaging being so glucose deprived right now. But, um, but I, I think that you were making, you're, everyone's making a good point that the efficacy of, of in-class instructional time is part of educational equity. And, and in fact, one of Kimberly Tanner's uh, tenants that is included in this framework is teach them from the moment they arrive. Are you wasting their time? Or are you really creating an environment where they're, you, they're learning from what's happening in that classroom space? So I think that these concerns that we're thinking about are well represented in the deeper equity at, uh, lit literature, which is great because they're now in, in this framework as well. So an instructor who comes in and spends 25 minutes talking about how annoying Canvas is and that they couldn't get an assignment graded in time, like this is not equitable. This is wasting your students' time and, and harming their learning, according to this framework, which again comes from the deeper literature. 